Hi everyone, Jason from Acara here with another Carvera Air tutorial. And in this one, we're looking at how to create the fourth axis relief example from the examples guidebook. The examples guidebook comes with every Carvera Air along with a sample pack of materials that can be used to complete these projects. The design files and bits are also included with your Carvera Air, so making these projects are an easy and satisfying way to get started with CNC production. Now, in order to create the fourth axis relief example project, you also need the optional fourth axis module, which can be equipped to any Carvera Air desktop CNC. We overview how to set up and configure the fourth axis module in another Carvera Air how-to video, but it's important to ensure that the rotation module is correctly secured to the bed of your Carvera Air and that you've prepared your tool head before moving forward. We always want to remove the dust shoe when using the fourth axis, and you can also take advantage of the air assist nozzle for chip evacuation and cooling when machining metal parts on your fourth axis. And before we dive into manufacturing, it's also important to get the bits that you need for this project ready to go. For the fourth axis relief project specifically, we will need tool one, the 25 millimeter single flute end mill for the roughing pass, and we'll need tool two, the 30 degree 0.2 millimeter V bit for the finishing pass. So now it's time to secure our stock. And for the fourth axis relief project, we're using a piece of epoxy tooling board that comes with the fourth axis module. This is 35 millimeters by 35 millimeters by 10 millimeters, and it can be installed using the default chuck jaw position of our fourth axis. Before securing the stock, we must find the center on one edge of our piece of material. We also recommend drilling a small hole in the center point to make loading and securing the stock easier and more accurate to do. We also always want to load our stock when the Carvera Air is powered off. First, loosely place the part in the chuck, then slide the tail stock so it makes contact with the center hole that we drilled into our stock. Tighten the two set screws on the rail of the tail stock so it cannot loosen. Next, tighten the chuck jaws so the stock is held securely in the center of our chuck. You can then rotate the knob of the tail stock to press and secure our piece of material and then tighten the set screw at the top of the tail stock so it cannot move. Lastly, rotate the stock so the corner aligns with the vertical axes or up and down as shown in the example guidebook and power on your Carvera Air. To prepare this job, we need to open the Carvera controller app and connect to our Carvera Air. After connecting to your Air, you can also jog or rotate the fourth axis module manually to adjust the position of your stock. You can also use the A-axis drop-down to see the current position or to set the current position to be zero or home after making any adjustment. Within the files menu, there's an examples folder that includes all of the example files for the project shown in this guidebook. There are two files in the rotation folder for the fourth axis relief. We'll start by opening the roughing file first. Once open, we can preview the design, toolpath, and G-code before clicking the config and run window. When a fourth axis file is open, the workplace origin settings will default to the fourth axis rather than an anchor point. We need to then set the X offset to be 50, which is relative to the right edge of the fourth axis headstock, and the Y offset to be zero, so the part is centered on the fourth axis in the Y direction. We also want to enable scan margin, which will trace the length of our design along the top edge of our stock using the wired probe, and we want to enable auto Z probe, which will be set to a fixed position for the fourth axis module. Auto leveling is not used for fourth axis designs. Once configured, click Run. The Carvera Air will first prompt us to load the wire probe, then use the wire probe to trace the edge of our design using the built-in laser pointer. Check to ensure that your design is in the correct location and away from the headstock or tailstock of the module. Next, the Carvera Air will probe the fixed home position on the top of the fourth axis module before prompting us to load tool one, both in the controller app and with a flashing light on the top of the Carvera Air. After loading the 25 millimeter end mill, press the button on the top of the Carvera Air to begin to manufacture this part. For the fourth axis relief, the machine will start by roughing the stock using the 25 millimeter bit while automatically rotating the fourth axis module during manufacturing. This will create a lot of chips and dust as much of the stock is removed during the roughing pass. The machine time for the roughing pass will be approximately one hour. Once completed, we can carefully use a vacuum to clear away some of the dust and chips. Do not power off your Carvera Air and be careful not to bump or move the part fixed in the rotary module. Back in the Carvera controller app, we now want to load the second file for finishing this example project. Press config and run and do not change your offset positions. You can also uncheck scan margin and uncheck auto Z probe as we do not need to check these parameters again because they were set in the first job. The Carvera Air will then prompt us to load tool two, the 30 degree V bit, both in the controller and with two flashing lights on the top of the machine to symbolize tool two. 
After we press the button to continue, the Carvera Air will proceed to cut the fine detail features of this design. Sometimes it can be difficult to see the fine cuts that the Carvera Air is machining, but you can always monitor what's going on live in the controller app. The runtime for the finishing file will be approximately 1 hour and 20 minutes. Once manufacturing is complete, you can home the machine and clean off the part using a brush or vacuum. Remember to turn off the Carver Air before loosening the chuck and set screws to release the part from the rotary module. You can then carefully cut and sand away the remaining epoxy tooling board on either end of this part using the handsaw and sanding block that comes with the sample materials kit. And that's all there is to it. This part really showcases some of the detail and intricate geometric designs that can be created with your Carver Air desktop CNC when the fourth axis module is fixed. Thanks so much for watching. Of course, please don't forget to subscribe and check out more tutorials and guides on the Make Carrot channel and wiki site.